Oh, I hear the train a coming. I spent the weekend frying fish at the Maryville Heritage Festival. We fried a bunch of fish, hush puppies, fries, selling all the plates to help out the Maryville High School Panther Pride Band as a part of my parenting duties for the uh, Band Booster Club. But the Heritage Festival was nice and I got to do some footage. Eli sat around challenging people to a chess game and uh, on Friday things were a little slow, but you know, hey, Here's the uh, Graybo Riot they uh, played that afternoon. And later on that afternoon, I had to go announce a track meet, so I didn't get the other bands on Friday afternoon. But I did get to walk around and show you some of the good things that were going on at the Maryville Heritage Festival. All right, and everybody had a good time. Also, there were some cast iron vendors there I'm gonna to talk to in just a little bit. And we're gonna take a tour of that museum right there. All right, now over here, got H&H &H General Store, and they sell cast iron. And this is the man right here. A little bit of cast iron, a little bit of tools, a little bit of uh, homemade quilts, uh, syrup, honey. What's your name? Fred Hartzell. Fred Hartzell, H&H &H General Store. But here's some of the cast iron they got. And I know a lot of y'all like to follow me because of the cast iron Wednesdays and stuff. And I think I'm gonna make this one mine. I think I'm gonna make that one mine, if not today, tomorrow. And these are the last three LSU commemoratives that I have left. Go Tigers! You'll notice it has the 2019, the score. Yeah, go Tigers. All right, now this is, now you work with H&H &H General Store too, and what's your Facebook page? Providence Peddler. Providence Peddler. Providence Peddler, I'm gonna have a link below to it. And this is all vintage and restored cast iron pieces here. He's selling and um, he had some dates on some stuff and he's got a hibachi from the 70s. This isn't one of those Chinese imports that you get on Amazon. This is, this is one from the 70s right here. Nice Dutch ovens and all kind of cool things. Now, speaking of Dutch ovens, we're gonna go over here to the Lucien cookers. Lucien Cookers, Chapter Louisiana out of Lake Charles. Old Ted Bork uh, on YouTube shows all the ones over there in, in central Louisiana, south central. But what we cooking, man? Beans and sausage. Beans and sausage. Well, if you're looking, you ain't cooking, so you can go ahead and cover it back up if you need to. Tell us about Lucien Cookers, sir. Well, we're a nonprofit, and we cook the fourth weekend of every month at Sam Houston Jones State Park. And right now we're at Nibbles Bluff because Sam Houston is closed down, and we try to promote the art of Dutch oven cooking. And we have children's groups, church groups, scouts, and whatnot come out from time to time, and we try to inform the young people about it. That's awesome, and I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I've been interested in y'all for about eight or nine years, and never gotten down there to cook with y'all. But I want to learn. I got a lot, I'm kind of a, been cooking in Dutch ovens for 20 years, but I'm still a beginner because it's not my main thing I do, you know. But I love to, love to learn about it. Everybody's welcome to come out, come visit, come cook, cook it at home, bring it, put it on the table. And That's awesome. We welcome everybody. That's awesome. I'm going to take another picture of your sign. If you want to get in touch with Le Chien Cooker, Le Chien. That's dog in French now because, you know, Dutch oven gathering, all right? All right, well, this is inside the museum, and they got all kind of things about the heritage of the area. And this is Miss Elaine, and Miss Elaine and... Robbie Cole. Miss, Miss Cole, Miss Robbie Cole. And so Miss Elaine, Miss Robbie gonna tell us about the museum, the curators here. All right, well, we have 
have a collection of artifacts from all over the uh, our area, the No Man's Land area, and uh, we also have Red Cagle. He's one of the people that lived here and grew up here and became famous and a great football player. That's an old school Wheaties box right there from the yes, 20s. Keener Cagle, they named a football stadium here after. Right, him. exactly. Mm -hmm. And people uh, have donated uh, different artifacts from their families. We have an Indian kiln that they unearthed uh, down by the river and we have our infamous uh, leather britches that we have were awarded a, uh, a, uh, a sign from the Legends and Lores, uh, Paul Bereg Brandt, and... Um, Is it true they buried him upside down? Yes. Why'd they bury him upside down? Because they didn't want him to see the sun to rise anymore. He was evidently, he's, he was either really, really good or really, really bad, but nobody knows. It's the legend. It's, it's the legend. legend. It's the legend. <laughs> Buried him face down. Mm -hmm. All right, Robbie, you want to take him on around? Well, we just... Um, All right, well, one more thing, Miss Elaine. Whoa, they shooting out there. <laughs> Woo! All right, one more thing, Miss Robbie. Um, you mentioned no man's land. This is the area that was known as the Sabine Free State. Yeah, exactly. Okay, can you tell us a little bit about that? probably know more than I do. I'm still researching this area, but uh, basically it was Texas and nobody would claim it yet. There was a dispute of who, who owned what. So in the intermut, most a lot of people came here that didn't follow the law um, because there was no law here. This and, was, this is just east of the Sabine River and west of what the French wanted to claim as Louisiana and the Spanish didn't want it either, and they had Texas and the Louisiana Purchase, and then once the Americans came in and bought the Louisiana Purchase, the Spanish didn't want it, the French didn't want it, the Americans didn't want it, nobody wanted this area, so it's just kind of anarchy and a libertarian's dream, you know? And, uh, so, you know, they call this area the Sabine Free State or uh, No Man's Land. And these are just artifacts that we have from different families. Uh, this is from the uh, movie theater that used to be here in town. That's the old building back there in the back. Oh, well, there's a Polaroid like my grandma used to have. And this have. is some old uh, uh, films that we have here. Ooh. And uh, it was, uh, our, really it was uh, established, Merritt was established on uh, logging. And this Malone Lumber Company gave us a saw. It was part of a sawmill. And a lot of this was, this is how this town got established with the lumber from the uh, mills and things. Do you and know what model Coleman Lantern that is? I have no idea. That's a 200A. Wow. I love how we ask questions and they already know. I know. And not only that, it's a 200A short top. And you can't see the date on the bottom. I'd have to get all the rust off, but there should be a date on the bottom of that. It'll give the month and the year. I'm a Coleman Lantern collector. That's why I told you that. Well, that's, 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 uh, well, we just spun around there. So this is not a professional production. You're watching Big Lou Barbecue on YouTube. <laughs> and this is our uh, canoe that has been uh, dug out from a log and uh, donated. That's how they used to do them. They would get a log and Yes, indeed. Dugout. They call them dugouts. Dugouts. You sure they didn't use those old chainsaws to do it? With no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they did not. <laughs> and then we have a couple of old wagons in here that family members have donated to our museum. Uh-oh, they got Singer represented here in Maryville. <laughs> got the Singer Hornets in Maryville. <laughs> well, we'll hear some Hornets. We'll take them. Yeah. Look at those old Maryville High School hats. Y'all, if y'all don't know, I'm a Spanish teacher at Maryville High School, so. And, then we have a and at Singer, so that's why I said that. We have All right. a section here that's kind of dedicated to house uh, some of our old things from Maryville. Uh, the desk and the. Uh, oh, beautiful. Old desk. It's back when kids behaved and all. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm just, I'm just, I didn't say that out loud on my channel. Well, no, you and know. And that's the picture of the old school there. That's what the old school looked like. And they tore it down in about 1989, is that correct? Oh, look at that. Another answer to before I ask the question. Why am I in I got an old piano from Texas and it came out of a saloon in Dallas. It's 1891 piano. It was my wife's father's. Both of them have passed away. 
If I ever move, maybe this museum will get that, even though it's not from this area. And this I don't is know what our, to do with it. This is a continuation of some of the history of Maryville. And then there's, we have the old yearbooks dating back to, uh, I don't know how far they go back. 1948. Oh, wow. So this is the, the uh, yearbooks that we have here. We try to purchase one every year to kind of keep it updated. And then we have uh, books here that we've kind of gotten pictures and history from families and things that we've kind of put up together. Uh, wow. So, uh, and this is Miss Vilma Nash. She used to be the photographer here in town. She did all the school photography, uh, everything. She was uh, Miss Vilma Nash. Very cool. She was the photographer. And the how, how, how long has this bill, uh, museum been here? I don't quite remember the day when it first started. And this is our... Butler's Proclamation. An outrageous insult to the women of New Orleans. Southern men avenge their wrongs. Now, if y'all know y'all's Civil War history, you know exactly what they're talking about. Um, $1,000 reward. All right. Yeah, he was one of oh yeah, this is uh Sam Jones. Hi hat Sam. Sam Houston Jones. Hi hat hi hat Sam. And he was born right here in Maryville and he was governor of Louisiana between Jimmy Davis's terms. And Jimmy Davis saying, um, you are my sunshine. sunshine. Mm -hmm. And he was elected for four years. And then Sam Jones beat him. And then four years later, Davis beat Jones. Mm -hmm. And so that's how the history, but we had a governor, Sam Houston Jones uh, from um, Maryville, his governor of Louisiana. Didn't he take QT Long's son? Didn't he beat QT Long? <laughs> I think it might've been Russell Long. Russell Long. I'm, not, I'm not sorry, Earl Long, but Earl. I think it might've been Earl, but. I think it was Earl. I think it was, he was after, because he was governor in 40. He was governor when was he governor? He was governor in 48, wasn't he? I don't know for sure. I'm sorry. Y'all got the history teacher doing this for well, you. Yeah, but I'm not I know. for sure. I'm not even the history. I mean, the history teacher says they have you teaching Spanish at uh, well, Singer, so. Excellent. I do a singer. I think it's. I think it was. I think it was uh, Earl, but he was. Um, yeah, 1940. Mm -hmm. Huh? 1940 to 1944. Well, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Huey P. was shot in 32? 30, 32 or 33? Because Huey P. was going, or maybe 35. He was going to travel, tra Huey P. was going to uh, challenge um, Roosevelt in 36. Mm -hmm. So. Very good. I think that's the way that goes. Anyway, <laughs> I'll have to double check it. I'll, I'll put yeah. a little thing down at the bottom. <laughs> Yeah, right, so that's the museum here at the festival, and I uh, hope y'all enjoyed the tour. All right, thank y'all very much. Well, thank, thank you, Miss so Cole, much. and thank you, Miss Lane. I well. got five more minutes for my rush. They probably should have last. <laughs> Cole, you in here too, huh? Yes, I'm getting out some information here. What about this cabin? What do you know about the log cabin? Well, this is part of a, like a step family to me, but my mother, my grandmother's, uh, was married to the uh, man that built, my great grandmother was married to the man that built, it. and uh, it's been in the family ever since, but it was down on 389, and they donated it to the museum, and they moved it up here. Very cool. A lot of history here. Old wood stove. That's the way life was. They didn't have those electric lights in those days. No, they didn't have electric lights. No, but they had 
Got the chamber pots though. Mm -hmm. And this was a sleeping loft up here, where and over there. For the children. The children. Sure cool. Works. And it's on the. Um, this is a Burks log cabin, and it's uh, historical. Very cool. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, Kathy. Hey. I'm gonna let him take. Well, as I said, I had to leave early on Friday, but I was back early Saturday morning and the festival was just getting started there, but we had a bigger crowd on Saturday, of course. That kettle corn smelled real good and tasted good too. And uh, my daughter, Hannah, decided to dress in Victorian costume and join the festivities. I think she looks great. Ran in these Old West Outlaws and that's my buddy, John. He and I fried a lot of fish that weekend. Hush puppies, french fries, and we had a lot of fun doing it as well. They had dancing groups on the stage and all kind of things, lots of good bands too, lots of good things to do on Saturday. And I sat down and played checkers with the sheriff and RC Cola beat Dutt Coke two games to one. Yeah, we had a lot of fun that day as well. And we got the lady sheriff here too, you know. So yeah, this is a rough place because they got the women being shared. My son won some paintball guns in a raffle and they sat out in the tailgated truck in the parking lot shooting at the train tracks. Well, that's my buddy John's family who helped me fry the fish. That's Bridget, Bella, and Tiger sitting on the back of the truck enjoying the music. And the music was good by all the bands that played. And uh, we had a good time at the Maryville Heritage Festival 2021. Of course, it was canceled last year in 2020, so we were glad to see it back. Had a great time. I hope you had a great time uh, watching this video with me. And um, just wanted to share with you how I spent the weekend cooking fish for the high school band. And as always, Gracias por mirar.